Hi everyone, this is Leslie. I hope everybody can hear me okay. And thank you for joining me today. I thought we would talk about grief today, grief and loss. It's a subject a lot of people don't like talking about, but I think it's important because most people go through this. But I do want to say, you don't have to go through grief if you don't want to. All you have to do is not ever love anyone or love anything or get attached to anything, and then you don't have to go through grief or loss. But as a lot of you know that um, my dog Happy passed away. He was only four years old and he died within two months of the diagnosis. So it was pretty tragic. But what ended up happening for me is it brought up a lot of other issues. I guess you could, you would say maybe unresolved issues. But we're gonna talk about loss of relationships. Death can be a loss of a relationship. It can be a loss of a job. With this virus, a lot of people lost their businesses, and that's that's like a death of a business. Um, that's pretty tragic. Or loss of a family member, or loss of a really good friend. There's there's all kinds of losses out there. But we're, what we're going to learn today is some ways to cope with loss. So i got to tell you a little about my background. I think in my day, we were we were kind of taught that just push everything under the rug and don't really talk about it. Just move forward, be strong. I remember when my father had passed away, my mom just said, you know, just go about your business. He'd want you to be happy. So we never even had a funeral. We never talked about it. It was never even acknowledged that my, my father had passed away. And then when my, when my mother passed away, um, I told everybody, I said, hey, we're having a, a fun funeral. I, I actually stood up and did stand-up comedy <laughs> and um, I told everybody to wear red I didn't want anybody to wear black I go this is upbeat my mom lived a good life I know she's in a better place so needless to say I never really went through the grieving process so what ended up happening to me was I just kept busy I, I think I became a workaholic I exercised I was in triathlons I was just busy busy I didn't want to think about it but um, Within a few years, I, I had three operations. Now here's a person that eats well, exercises, and wouldn't you know it, <laughs> I had heart surgery. Me above all people, heart surgery. I also had gallbladder surgery. Then I had bladder surgery. So I had all these things and I thought, it doesn't really make sense because I'm a person that takes care of myself. But after this, this death of happy, I started realizing I never really did grieve the deaths of my parents. I never really grieved the deaths of a lot of my really good friends passed away. I just thought, well, be strong, keep going. But what I really realized is if you don't deal with it, it will deal with you. So <laughs> I, I read this book um, from the Dalai Lama. It's called The Art of Happiness. And he said that a lot of Americans feel depressed because they think they're supposed to be happy all the time and then when they're not happy they think well what's wrong but he was saying that it's natural that you feel happy but you also have down times too and it's okay to feel down so what we're going to learn today is some ways to cope with with loss there's a lady by the name of elizabeth kubler ross and she talks about five stages of grief that one may go through and there's really no right or wrong way to grieve. First, I want to tell you that. And all people don't go through these five steps. Some people maybe take 10 steps, some take two steps. I personally didn't go through all five of these steps, but I'll tell you a little about the steps. <clears throat> the first step is denial. And I remember when I got the call about my father, the, the doctor called and said, your dad's gonna be gone in a few days. And I just said, no, he's not. My dad's not gonna leave. And I did the same thing with the dog. I, I just went into shock and I, I couldn't believe it. It was, it was um, the big, one of the biggest shocks. And then after that, you start going numb because you can't believe it's happening. So these are all normal feelings that you may feel. And then um, the second phase is anger. Ooh, you could get really angry. For me, I thought, why would my dog die? <laughs> My four-year-old dog died of cancer. I, you know, these are normal feelings. You just get mad, like, hey, this, this just is not fair. 
and you might even feel anxiety of like, what, what's going on? Um, the third stage is bargaining. I, I personally didn't go through this stage, so that would be where you talk to God or your higher power or whoever, and then you start bartering, well, if I do this and if I do that, would you please keep my dog alive or will you please do this? Or So that's the third step of bargaining. And the fourth step would be depression, which is something to acknowledge in yourself. And, and I did get this with happy and I allowed myself to feel the feeling, but depression's an ugly thing. And depression, what I went through is my personality kind of made a change. I usually love being around people, but I did not even want to get out of bed, <laughs> which was not like me. I, I just wanted to stay in bed and I didn't really want to talk to people. I didn't want to go out. Um, I just wasn't myself. I lost interest in a lot of things. And that is so not like me. So normally I just would just push through all these things, but I realized that it's important to grieve. I've um, done a lot of research on grieving and it's okay to feel bad. It, we can't be happy every single day of our life. So you've, you've got to allow these feelings. And then the last stage is um, where you accept it. So, and then you might go back and forth. You go from acceptance to depression again, back to anger, back to denial. So you go through all these different phases. Um, there's no right or wrong way, like I said before. So I mentioned to you that I would teach you some, some ways to deal with, with this type of stress. The first thing I'd wanna say is to learn to really love yourself and take good care of yourself, to be gentle with yourself and, and do nice things for yourself. You don't need to keep pushing and be strong and just act like you have it all together because it's okay to slow down. You don't need to keep busy all the time. You need to reflect about things and perhaps even find some type of meaning in this. So they've actually done some scientific research on ways to take care of yourself through this. So this isn't anything I made up. This is, this is scientific here, but if you're going through a loss or you're going through a really, really difficult time, one of the most important things you wanna do is get plenty of sleep. Because, hey, <laughs> if you don't get sleep, oh my gosh, you feel so depressed the next day. I remember I had insomnia for a long time. I just would be laying up at three, four in the morning just thinking and dwelling and I go, oh my gosh, go to sleep, go to sleep. But I think, you know, when you go through loss, it's okay to take something to help yourself sleep, perhaps some type of herbs or chamomile tea. If that doesn't work, you know, tell your doctor and maybe she can refer you something to help you sleep because insomnia does numbers to your system. I, I force myself up in the morning. I, I finally learned that I just can't stay in bed all day. So I got up and I started exercising and how I did that, I just, I just started walking around the neighborhood. I didn't do any big you know, races or anything, but I thought I got to get some serotonin in my brain. So the sleep and then make yourself get up and just go for a walk. And then the third thing is being in nature. Boy, that's one of my favorites is just to be in nature. I love nature. I'm really fortunate that I live right by the Orchid Hills and we have all kinds of beautiful trails there. And just to be able to walk through these trails is just so refreshing. Although I, I must say it did trigger a little bit because I used to walk my dog happy through the trail. So that would, would be kind of a trigger. Also, <clears throat> the fourth thing would be meditation or prayer. I feel that it's really, really important to have some type of higher power, spiritual basis to your life, something that you can fall back on. And meditation and prayer have been scientifically proven to really help your well-being. The next one, this one is really, really important. We're social creatures and it's so important to, to talk to people because it's easy just to stay in your house and medicate yourself and, and not want anything to do with people, but it's good to force yourself up and make a phone call to some people and, and talk to people about how you're feeling. And I think it's also important to talk to the right people because some people that maybe haven't really grieved themselves, they don't know 
what to say to you. They might just say, well, you know, they lived a long life or just be grateful, you know, which is good. They're well intended, but um, try to get people that are good listeners that really can hear you out and and hear what you what you have to say. And then another thing um, <clears throat> you could do is help somebody else. This is later down the line, not, not right when it happens, but that's why I'm making this video is because I feel like maybe I'm helping somebody out there going through the grieving process and maybe you can learn something through some of the things that I've I've done myself. I've also went to grief therapy because I I'll tell you what, I'm not a morose person but I felt like I really needed something. So I I did grief therapy. I started with one therapist and it, it and it just didn't work for me. He was very pragmatic, he's very cognitive, very rational in the mind of like, you know, you can do this, you can get over it, but being that I am a creative person, it didn't really work too well for me. <laughs> I've already done that. So I got another another counselor that that really helped me move through the grieving process. And I had six sessions with this lady and and she really she really did wonders for me. But by grieving what I realized is how you go through the pain. Because truthfully, if you don't grieve, you don't feel it, you're not really dealing with it. So that's why you do the grief therapy and it was that was probably one of the best things that I've done too so what happens is when you're grieving it feels like you're walking down a really dark tunnel that nobody wants to go down we're thinking well hey I'll eat a cheeseburger I'll eat a pizza maybe I'll drink some wine or I'll I'll do anything not to feel this but it starts catching up with you like I said I was having these health issues because I never really dealt with the grief of the loss of my mother, my father, several of my really good friends. And um, <clears throat> it was time to do that. So you don't stay in the tunnel forever. Eventually you do come out of the tunnel and, and you do get better. But I do want to tell you that it's really, really important to do self-care for yourself. That's probably the main thing. And this is for creative people out there. Everybody's not creative. But I, I need a creative outlet, so what I did is I journaled. I just started writing all my feelings down. Um, I did some poetry. I, ha I haven't written poems in a long time. I started doing that. I started writing music. I play the guitar and I sing, and I, I actually wrote a song to my mother <laughs> that I wish she was still here and she could hear all about my life and about my daughter and my family, but she's not. But it, it was very therapeutic writing this music out. I'm not an artist, but a lot of you people out there are artists and maybe you could draw pictures or somehow you have to get it out of yourself. One of my favorite things to do, I have a park across the street. I like to just walk, excuse me, I walk across the park. We have a really nice park bench and I sit there and I talk to my dog as if he's still here, which I, I have faith he is. I, I do, I feel that you really, these are our bodies. We can't, we can't kill our flesh. We, we have a spirit inside of ourselves that just can't never die. And I felt that my dog was an angel. He is a spirit. And so I sit on that park bench and I just talk to him and it's so therapeutic as if he's still here. And I talk to my mother and I talk to my father as if they're here and, and I'm telling you they are still here I feel like they're here they just can't they can't communicate with you but but they can see you and they know what's going on and they're there for you so go ahead and talk to your loved ones they they definitely can can hear you I, I'm sure of that one I also um like to take baths I, I put lavender and flowers in my bath and I light candles and I play music and I just lie in the bathtub and it's and it feels so soothing I don't know if any of you guys out there like to do that but it's it's another way to take care of yourself I also do uh, yoga they have a really nice um, yoga studio here in Orchid the um, unwind yoga studio I've been doing yoga outside myself but if you're interested in yoga um, it's so good to do for your mind, your body, and your spirit, and they have restorative things you could do. Restorative means that you just sit in a position and, and uh, in a way, meditate, and it's 
it's very, very healing. Um, I also like to get massages. My daughter and I, we actually trade. She massages me one week and then I massage her another week. And then I also have a, a, another friend that I trade with. So massaging is very good because you carry your emotions in your body. And so by getting massages, it helps bring out all the, the feelings and it starts detoxing your body by by getting a really nice massage. And make sure you get a good massage therapist. That counts too as well as getting a good counselor that you feel like you're a, a good match with. So anyway, um, those are just some tips that I wanted to share, that I wanted to get out there, and there's help out there. There is also one other type of grief that I want to talk about. It's called complicated grief. Now complicated grief is where you don't pull yourself out of it for years and years and years. I remember I I met a man and he, he was telling me he was grieving that his wife died and I, I said, wow, how long ago? And he said like 15 years ago and he was still grieving really hard. Like from one to 10, he was grieving a 10 after 15 years. So that's what you call complicated grief. That means you're not coming out of it. Your, the, your pain level's not even going down. And if, if that's where you're at, I would definitely recommend seeing a professional because there's no need to live in that type of pain year after year after year after year. So anyway, these are some suggestions to make yourself feel better. And I really appreciate all you guys watching me and supporting me. And, and I'm here for you guys too. If you ever want to private message me, if you have anything to say or um, comments, I'm always open. So thanks. Thanks for being here. And I plan on doing more uplifting videos. All right. See you later. Bye.